Does this sound familiar to you? Bro, I had the game. I literally was one turn off. I had the boss in my hand. They took their last frost card in the- If this is you or even one of your friends, losing in a way like this can be absolutely devastating. However, a lot of the time, you can actually control what happens in the game by looking at what knockouts you take every single turn to lead your victory. Prize mapping is the act of looking at all of the prize cards you have left, the Pokemon that you have available to take knockouts, and your opponent's Pokemon on the board. What is the most efficient path to take all six of my prize cards given all of this? So not only do you have to take all six prize cards to win in Pokemon, you have to take all six prize cards before your opponent. And this is extremely tricky sometimes. Sometimes your opponent gets off attack super fast. Sometimes they have one prizers that are really hard to kill. Regardless of the case, it's always important to know your best path to victory. So obviously both players start out with six prize cards. The simplest prize map is 1-1-1-1-1-1. That means taking out one single prizer every single turn. This will of course get you to win, but you need six attacking turns, which either means going first, waiting a turn, and then six turns, or going second if you can pull off an attack such as Lost Box five turns after that. This is why single prize decks are so powerful because they force your opponent to actually take all six prize cards and use every single turn while they're spreading damage with Sableye. Most decks, however, run a combination of one and two prizers. So let's take a look how we can most efficiently take prizes against these sort of decks. So if we take out one two prizer, our prize map becomes in no particular order two, one, 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 one. That means knocking out a two prizer and then knocking out four single prizers. This brings our total attacking turns down to five. Not bad, but not the greatest. If we take two two prizers out, we are left with a prize map of two, two, one, one, which means two, two prizers and two, one prizers, and we have the game. This gets the job done in just four attacking turns. And last up, we have two, two, and two, the optimal, the ideal. I win in just three turns of attacking. So let's just start with optimizing the number of prizes that we're taking every single turn. What I just told you may seem pretty straightforward. If you can knock out as many two prizers as you can, why don't you? While this is true a lot of the times, you don't have every card in your hand when you need it. You don't have every single boss's orders in your hand when you need it. So you have to know how to adapt in every single situation. More specifically, I want to talk about the seven prize game. So that one prize map that I talked about, the 2-2-1-1, where you need to take four attacking turns to win the game, knocking out two two prizers and two one prizers. All the prize maps I mentioned, however, are not in any particular order. So this prize map could be two one two one, where you're taking one prizers out in between two prizers. It could be the one prizers at the beginning of the game or the end of the game. The seven prize game is when you've taken five prize cards and your opponent just says, here's a two prizer, I own know, have fun. But if your opponent actually does this, you say, well, I've taken five prize cards. Why do I need to knock out this two prizer? That's not fair. So this strategy is very, very powerful because of this reason. Taking five prize cards isn't necessarily easy and saying, hey, I have a two prizer you also need to knock out makes it just that much harder for your opponent. So why am I even bringing this up? First of all, you don't want to fall for this. Like you never want to be put in this position yourself. My rule of thumb is I always like to be on even prize cards if I'm playing against like a two prize deck such as Lugia, Maridon, there's a lot of them. Being on an even number of prize cards, whether that be six, four, or two, means that I am always able to ensure that I just need to knock out one more two prizer to win the game. Obviously, knocking out two prizers consecutively is the easiest way to do this, but if I knock out a one prizer either because I have to or I'm forced to, bossing up another one prizer that might disrupt them more is very beneficial to my game plan. If I'm at three prize cards remaining, for example, I need to knock out two things anyways, and if their only way of knocking me out is through a two prizer, I might just be fine with bossing out an Archeops and killing that, making things that much harder for them. And of course, this is just worth it because we are only taking one prize card, still staying on our prize map, and we are forcing them to have more cards or else we just win. So yeah, don't like boss one prizers when you're on this even prize card train. Just 
keep it going, boss up the two prizer, keep knocking out two prizers. You also should be mindful of the seven prize game because your opponent can very well force you into it via Iono and just throwing a two prizer in the active. This is kind of why Giratina V-Star is super powerful because it can do this very, very easily. It has a plethora of one prizers it can throw in the active and do a substantial amount of damage. And then at the end of the game, it can throw a Patina, play Path Roxanne and say, have fun. And of course, always be looking for ways to do this yourself. You're not just trying to avoid it. You're trying to force your opponent into it yourself. This means if your opponent's at one prize, don't attack with the one prizer or Aqua turn into a one prizer. Always be attacking with the two prizer. Make your opponent have the boss because that makes it just that much harder for them. So a pretty relevant example of this prize mapping when it comes to deck building is two prizers into other two prizers. The most common one is Raikou V into Lugia V-Star. So Raikou V has kind of been the Lugia counter in Lost Box. However, when you look at the numbers, Raikou V takes two prizes off of Lugia and Lugia takes two prizes off of Raikou. So as you can see, it's completely even and getting out of Raikou against Lugia does not push you ahead in the prize race. Now there is still a reason for playing it in the Lost Box archetype in that the deck really has no way to deal with Lugia. So you'd rather go even and take prizes progressing your win condition than obviously just cramming the Lugia, then heal 20. Like you're not doing anything without the Raikou. But just keep in mind, it's completely even. You're not like getting any sort of advantage by swinging into a Lugia with a Raikou because they're just going to respond and one-shot it themselves. In Lost Box's case, it only helps to initiate the prize exchange. If you are the first one to attack, if you attack with Raikou before they attack with anything, you're taking the first few prize cards. And if you can keep that sort of going, that means that you'll be the first one to take your last prize cards. This is also applicable with 151 in Mew EX. Now, a lot of people hype this card and they're like, oh, it's so good. But when you look at the prize mapping, Mew EX is a two prizer. And with most of the format being two prizers, Mew doesn't trade favorably into anything. It just trades even into two prizers. Now, is it to say that Mew AX is a bad card? No, it can do a lot of really cool things. I just don't think it is applicable in every single deck. If you already have a deck that can swing for heavy numbers and do a lot of damage, taking a lot of prize cards fast, what kind of purpose is Mew EX going to serve for you? It's only for those more problematic matchups, such as Charizard for Lost Box and Giratina, maybe for some decks, that Mew EX might be able to jump in and save the day, taking those last few prize cards where the rest of your deck can't. So yeah, when you're building a deck, always be mindful of this. Always think of how many prize cards am I going to get with this Pokemon and how many prize cards is my opponent going to take by knocking out this Pokemon. Another example is Zacian V in Gardevoir. This card only trades favorably into Mew VMAX because Zacian V can just blow up a Mew VMAX, take three prize cards, and they can only take two by return KOing it. With Mew not being nearly as popular as it once was, the two Zacian V seen in a lot of Gardevoir lists is obviously non-existent. You'd rather use reversal energies to attack with your single prize Gardevoirs than attacking with Zacian because attacking with Zacian doesn't get you any sort of advantage. And you need to be out trading your opponent, especially in a deck like Gardevoir, where you fall behind in the start. So also, it's not just the number of prize cards that matter you're taking each turn. It also matters what you are knocking out. Like an obvious example is if you're playing against Lugia and they have a Tyranitar V bench with energies and a Luminion V, you have a boss in hand, you can kill one of them, pick the Tyranitar. Like there's no reason not to. You're not going to gain anything by knocking out the Luminion. You are just going to get slapped with the Tyranitar next turn. Like I was saying before, if you can slow down your opponent's game plan while still staying on the number of attacking turns you need to win, then you are in a good spot. Yes, you do want to be focused on your own route to victory, but also be hyper obsessed with your opponent's route to victory. A lot of the time, it's a lot easier to disrupt your opponent than it may seem. Think about all the times that you've had your starting hand or maybe mid game where you say, oh, I just wish my opponent doesn't do this and then they don't do it and maybe you can even get a win. That's what you need to be thinking about on the other side. You need to say, what is my opponent wanting me not to do and how do I do that?
And when you put prize mapping in the equation, you can mess up your opponent's prize mapping while promoting your own. And these are things that you want to be thinking about during the game. So in summary, just always be thinking ahead. Start thinking about prize mapping as soon as you flip over your active. You should be able to know what deck your opponent is playing. You should be able to know what attacking Pokemon you can get from your starting hand and think from there. Always be thinking one to two turns ahead and try to optimize your prize route as much as possible. That about wraps it up for this video. I hope you all found this informative. I love doing these strategy videos and I'm probably going to have a lot more of them in the videos to come. So yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you all next time.